Subways are a phenomenal way to provide cheap and efficient transportation within densely populated urban cores. Though the New York subway has recently been on a downward spiral, this has less to do with the system itself and more to do with certain people who are using it. Despite this, Elon Musk has a different vision for the future of underground travel which includes using a network of smaller tunnels and cars as opposed to the regular train-like system. And though this is quite a simple idea in theory, boring tunnels have the potential to destroy subways in terms of cost and efficiency. And here's why. Well, starting off, the most glaring difference between regular subways and boring tunnels is the size of the tunnels themselves. Boring tunnels are significantly smaller than regular subways, which allows for exponentially lower construction costs. So far, the boring company has been digging tunnels that are 14 feet in diameter. However, the construction of the tunnel takes up 2 feet, which leaves 12 feet in internal diameter. Subway tunnels, on the other hand, are generally about 20 feet in diameter. And assuming that the structure of the tunnel more or less scales up proportionally with the diameter, we'll say that the walls of the tunnel bring down the internal diameter by 3 feet to about 17 feet. If we do a bit of math, we can figure out that boring tunnels require approximately 40 cubic feet of concrete for each foot of tunnel. Meanwhile, subway tunnels require over double that at 87 cubic feet. And when you factor in additional costs of building a subway such as laying tracks, electric lines, and power stations, you can see how this would get expensive very quickly. The Boring Company's tunnels cost $10 million per mile, according to their website. This sounds pretty high already, until you realize that the average subway tunnel construction in the US costs anywhere between $200 and $500 million per mile, or 20 to 50 times higher. We even have subways that cost upwards of $1 billion per mile, mainly in California. But even that pales in comparison to certain subways in New York, which cost a whopping $2.6 billion per mile. Europe and Japan are much better than the US in terms of cost efficiency, as they both come in at about $100 million per mile. But that's still 10 times the boring tunnel. Anyways, coming back to the United States, even estimating on the lower end of the range at $300 million per mile, New York City's 665 miles of track clocks in at an eye-watering $200 billion. For that same cost, the boring company could have built 20,000 miles of tunnels. That's nearly half the size of the entire US interstate highway system, which comes in at 46,876 miles. And keep in mind, that's just from the cost of the construction of the subway tunnels in New York City alone. I think that really needs no further explanation. So, the cost of construction of boring tunnels are exponentially cheaper than the cost of construction of subways, which makes building a boring network much easier. But that's not it. What about the subway stations themselves? The boring company doesn't need any subway stations as they simply have rising platforms which can directly take you into the network. They are offering a subservice station option, but this is just one of the options to enter the boring network and they are by no ways limited to underground stations like traditional subways. This eliminates the need to excavate millions of cubic feet every several miles and build escalators and restrooms and walkways and all the associated maintenance. I think you get the point. New York subway stations have construction costs in the hundreds of millions, with figures ranging from 347 million to 812 million. And it doesn't really matter how much the average boring platform costs, as it's no doubt just a fraction of this. So it's no question that the boring company destroys subways on an exponential level from an economical perspective. But cost isn't everything. People are often willing to pay premium prices for premium services. But unfortunately, I don't think we can really classify subway stations as a premium service, at least not in the US. Generally, US subway stations are at best a mediocre service. 
It should be noted, however, that they are extremely cheap. But anyways, moving on to non-economical benefits of the boring system, we have convenience. With the boring tunnels, you can take your own private vehicles into the tunnel, meaning that you don't even have to walk to and from the station. But even if you are just using the system as a pedestrian, it's quite likely that a boring entry point will be closer to your starting point and destination as they can easily be built across the city. Of course, this is no doubt a first world problem, but still a benefit nonetheless. Aside from convenience, we also have speed of transportation. Subway trains generally only travel at 40 to 50 miles per hour, not to mention the constant stops, which brings down the overall travel speed to just 15 or 20 miles per hour. The boring company, on the other hand, is aiming to offer speeds of anywhere between 125 and 150 miles per hour. Also, traffic won't be an issue as all the vehicles are expected to be autonomous. A regular single lane freeway can handle about 2200 human drivers per hour. But when we throw AI into the mix, it's expected that this number will grow by at least 3x. So though boring tunnels are only one lane roads, they can handle the same capacity as three lane freeways and potentially even more. Moreover, with the boring tunnels, you can choose to enter at any point and exit at any point and skip all the exits in the middle. If you choose the pedestrian option, however, you may have to deal with stops in the middle, but this is likely still far less than the number of stops in a regular subway. The thing is, the boring buses are quite small in the first place, so they're forced to tend to the needs of niche routes and customers as opposed to serving a generic market. Thus, the regular boring loop is a cost-effective, convenient, and fast method of travel within and around cities. But this isn't the only thing coming out of the boring company. Their most exciting endeavor is no doubt the Hyperloop. The Hyperloop is essentially the same thing as the regular boring loop. The difference is simply that the Hyperloop will be in a vacuum chamber, thus eliminating the effects of air resistance, which allows for ultra high speeds of even over 600 miles per hour. So we're basically dealing with an underground jet. And as no energy is wasted in gaining altitude, we can travel from point to point even more efficiently. We will probably see the emergence of some pretty useful routes, such as from Washington DC to Baltimore or New York. But the more significant use case of Hyperloops may be in conjunction with SpaceX's Starship rockets. If you haven't heard yet, SpaceX is planning on using their new rocket, Starship, to provide extremely rapid point-to-point -point travel within the Earth, as in less than 30 minutes for most long-distance routes. However, one drawback to the system is that most of the launch facilities will be on the ocean, as the rockets simply make too much noise for daily inland use. As a result, this is a perfect opportunity to use hyperloops, as hyperloops can offer quick travel between launch facilities and large inland cities. So that may be what we are looking at when it comes to the long-term future goals of the boring company. But let's be real here. When will such projects even take place and become open to the public? Well, currently, it's not even close to becoming a reality. In June of this year, the boring company actually completed two tunnels in Las Vegas, but they're only one mile long each. And though they will become open to the public in January of 2021, the top speed is currently only 35 miles per hour, despite faster speeds being demonstrated. Aside from this, the system will also not take advantage of autonomous driving sleds initially, and it will rely on human drivers. In the boring company's defense, they haven't even been around for a full four years yet, and such infrastructure takes decades to get approval for and slowly build up. With that being said, we may see some major routes opening up as well as regular loop service for major cities by the 2030s. However, Serious adoption and implementation of the idea won't take place until well into the 2030s and 2040s. But though Elon's timelines are usually way too ambitious, he usually does eventually deliver. So let's hope that this is the same case with the Boring Company. Will you guys be using Boring Loops or do you just plan on sticking to autopilot and traditional highways? Comment that down below. Also, 
drop a like if you guys are excited for the future of public transportation, and consider subscribing to see more questions logically answered. But until then, I'm Hari, and I'll see you guys on the next one.